case from Agora's developer relations team. And in this video, we'll learn how to build an Agora token server using Golang. First, we'll set up a server using Jin and the Gonic web framework, and then we'll use the Agora access token pack builder package to set up our token server. We'll build the token server that serves both RTC and RTM tokens, both individually and as a set root. We'll start by creating a new folder. We'll call it Agora Token Server. We'll open that folder in terminal. Now we're going to want to set up our dependency management. So we'll use go mod init Agora Token Server to set up our Go modules. Next, we'll load the Jin module. So we'll say go get github.com slash Jin dash conic slash gym that th that'll download the gym framework for our web service we use the agora token builder framework for building the agora token so say go get github.com slash agora io dash community slash go token builder Now that our dependencies are downloaded, let's open up the project in our text editor. We'll create a new file called main.go. We'll declare the package as main, and then we'll set up the main function. Next, we'll import the gin dependency. So we'll do import github.com slash gin dash gonic slash gin. We'll start by defining our gin service. I like to call mine API. We'll say gin.default. Next, we'll set up simple endpoint just for testing, we'll say api.get, we'll call it ping, and for now we'll just use a generic function here. We'll pass in a reference to the gen context. And then we'll use that context to respond, so we'll say c dot json we'll give it a 200 response code we'll say gin dot h we'll say the message we'll say pong ping pong simple enough for our testing purposes right now just to get us set up next we we'll want to listen on a specific port, so we'll say api.run, and I like to use port 8080. Now we have a very basic gin server set up, so we can test it out. Let's go to the terminal, open up, we'll say go run main.go. We can see our web service is running and listening on port 8080. Let's open up our browser. localhost slash 8080 slash ping and there we can see our response pong now we can close our browser we can interrupt the service and go back to the code now we're ready to set up our Agora service so let's create the endpoints so api.get we'll start with the RTC endpoint so we'll say RTC slash and we want a channel name. So we'll pass in channel name. We'll want the, the role of the user. So we'll pass in role. And pass in token type. And lastly, we'll pass in the UID. To handle this, we'll need a function called get RTC token. We'll do the same for RTM. We'll say api.get slash RTM. We'll 
We only care about the UID in this case. We'll pass that to a function called get RTM token. We'll also want to get both tokens, so we'll say api.get, we'll call this RTE slash channel name slash role token type. We're taking the same parameters as the RTC token, but this time we're going to call a function called get both tokens. So let's define our functions. We'll start with get RTC token. We'll pass in a reference to the gen context. We'll leave it blank for now. Do the same for get RTM token. And lastly, do it again for get both tokens. Since we're passing in a number of parameters, we'll have two functions to parse those out. First, we'll start with the RTC parameter. So we'll say func parse RTC params, and here we'll pass in a reference to the gen context, and then we'll want to return the channel name, the token type, and the UID as a string. So we'll turn those as string types. We'll also want to return the role as an RTC token builder dot role type. And we'll also return back the expiration timestamp. This will be a UN32. Lastly, we'll return an error. Do the same for the RTM params. So we'll do parse RTM params, pass in the gen context. We'll return the UID as a string, the expiration timestamp again as an unsigned 32 bit integer, and an error just in case. Since we have two different token types for our RTC token, we'll use a function called generate RTC token, pass in the channel name, the UID is a string, the token type. These will all be string types. Also pass in the role that we got from our RTC params and the expiration time sample. From here, we'll want to return a RTC token. That'll be a string and an error, just in case. So here, we'll go back to our get RTC token. Let's plan this out. We'll get the param values generate the token, and then we'll return the token. So from the parameter values, we're going to want the channel name. We're going to get back the token type, the user ID as a string, Roll, the expiration timestamp, and the error. We get this all back from the parse RTC params. We'll pass in the context. 
Next we'll want to check the error. So say if error is not equal nil, we'll let the context know we've thrown an error, pass it in. We will also abort with status JSON, give it 400 code, and then for the body we'll say message uh, error generating RTC token we'll attach our error we'll also give it a status code of 400 and then we'll return early if we run into an error okay. now we're ready to generate the token so we'll say RTC token and token error be what we'll get back from generate RTC token. Here we'll pass in the channel name. UID is a string. Token type. The role and the expiration timestamp. Now we're ready to return our response. So let's first check if the token error is nil. If it's not nil. the error. Also want to let the context know we've thrown an error. Pass that in there. And then we'll abort with status JSON. Pass in a 400 status. And the body will be status 400 message be error say error generating RTC token and we'll show the token error otherwise we'll affect the JSON context we'll give it a 200 response code body will be RTC token. So get back the RTC token that we generated. Cool. Now that we have the RTC token, let's move on to parsing those RTC params. So here, let's get the param values. Start with the channel name. This will come from C dot param channel name next we'll get the role as a string this comes from the param role we'll get the token type Next we'll get the user ID as a string. Lastly, we'll, we'll allow for the expire time. We'll set a default value for it. So if we pass the expiry value, otherwise we'll put a default value of 3600 seconds. If the role string is equal to publisher, we're going to set the role equal to RCT, RTC token builder dot publisher. Otherwise, we'll make them a subscriber. So I'll say role equals RTC token builder dot role subscriber. Now, our expiration time came to us as a string. We'll need to convert that first to a 64-bit integer. So we'll parse that using string convert. Parse the expire time. 
base 10, 64 bit. <clears throat> and if there's an error, let's just bubble that up to the top. Say error, we'll format it. Failed to parse, expire time. And causing this error. Now we'll, we'll pass in the expire time and the possible error. Just to give ourselves an idea if anything goes wrong, where it went wrong along the way. Otherwise, we'll say the expire time in seconds is equal to unsigned 32 conversion from expire 64. Then we'll get the current timestamp. And we'll want that also as a 32-bit unsigned integer. So we'll time.now UTC dot Unix. And we'll use this to generate our expiration timestamp. So our expiration timestamp will be a combination of our current timestamp plus our expired time in seconds. So now we're ready to return all our parameters. We'll return the channel name, the token type, the user ID as a string, the role, the expire time, and the error. Now last, let's generate our RTC token. So check the token type first. So if we're using token type of user account, that means we're using string IDs for the tokens. So we don't need to do anything to the UID string. So we'd say RTC token and the error is equal to RTC token builder build token with user ID user account, sorry. And here we'll pass in our app ID, which we need to define. So we'll pass in the app ID, the app certificate, the channel name, the UID is a string, the role, and the expired timestamp. So we need to define our app ID and our app certificate. I like to use environment variables. So first let's make these global because we'll need them to generate all the tokens. Let's say app ID and app certificate. They're going to be of type string. Then in our main function, we're going to want to get those environment variables first. So we're going to say app ID env and app ID exists are the return values from when we do the OS lookup environment variable. So we'll get back um, the value and a boolean if it exists or not. We'll do the same for the app certificate. And again, we'll use OS lookup and pass in the environment variable names. Next, we'll check if the app ID exists or the app certificate exists, or if they don't. If they don't exist, we'll want to throw a fatal error because our token server just won't work without these values. So here we'll log out our fatal error. And let the user know that the environment's not configured correctly. Otherwise, we'll set our global app ID 
an app certificate each equal to the environment value, variable values that we got back. Now that we have our app ID and app certificate defined, here we get back our RTC token. So we'll want to return the RTC token and the error. Otherwise, if we're using the token type of UID, we're going to be using integer based IDs. So we'll need to convert our string ID. So we'll start with a UID 64 and parsing error. And we'll convert from, so we use string convert parse to convert the UID from a string to a 64 bit. And then if there's a parsing error. Let's let that bubble up. So we'll say error equals format error. let it know what our errors were. And then let's return an empty string and our error. As long as our UID was successfully parsed, we'll then say UID we need as a 32-bit unsigned integer. So we'll do a little conversion from UID 64 to 32. Then we can say our RTC token and the error are equal to RTC token builder dot build token with UID. And here again, we'll pass in our app ID, our app certificate, the channel name, our 32-bit UID, the role, and the expired timestamp. Then we'll return back our RTC token, and just in case any error we might have incurred. Lastly, let's do a catch-all. So if it's not a UID or user account, we'll just pass back an error. the user know that we can figure out what the token type they passed in was. Show them the token type. And lastly we'll return well first we'll want to log this error. empty string and return the error as well. So now we're able to gener generate our RTC token. Let's move on to generating our RTM token. So here we'll want to get the parameter values build the RTM token and then return it. Very similar to what we did for the RTC token. We'll start by getting the UID as a string and the expiration timestamp, along with any possible error we could have encountered when we parse the RTM params. Here we'll pass in the context. Real quick, we'll just check if there was any errors. So if the error wasn't equal to nil, We'll let the context know we've encountered an error. Also, abort with status J 
case on. Give it a 400 error code. And for the body, we'll, we'll show the status. So 400. And then we'll pass back a message. say error generating RTM token and return back. So next we'll build the RTM token. So I'll say RTM token, RTM token error. We'll use the RTM token builder class directly here. token, passing in our app ID, app certificate, the UID is a string, and the RTM role here, there's only one role, so user, and then the expiration time. Let's double check that we didn't get any errors. So if token error is not equal to nil, we'll log that out. Pretty important. And we'll also let the context know we threw an error. And let's create an error message. Let's say error generating RTM token. And here, let's show that error. So, forward status JSON, 400 status. And then for the body, The status code is 400, and the error, and we'll send back our error message that we just created. Otherwise, let's return back our RTM token. So I'll say context.json, give it a 200 status code. And then for the body, we'll say RTM token. And return our RTM token value. Okay, now before we can get both tokens, we need to fill in our parse RTM params. So here, we're going to want to get the parameter values from the context again similar to how we did it for the RTC. So we're going to say UID string is equal to C dot param and just get the UID param. From there, the timestamp again will be an optional query param. So we can say C dot default query. And if we pass in an expire time and our expiry time, it'll use that. Otherwise, we'll default to 3600. Again, we're going to want to do our conversion from the expire time to timestamp. So first, we're going to we're going to convert from the string to the 64-bit. If we have any errors with the parsing, let's return that as well.
if our conversion went okay, we would get our expiration time in seconds, converting from a 64-bit to a 32-bit unsigned. We'll also get the current timestamp. We'll create our expiration timestamp using the current timestamp plus the expired time in seconds. Now we're ready to return the user ID string, the expired timestamp, and any error we may have incurred. So now we have our RTC params done. RTM params done. We're ready to generate both tokens. So this one's going to be a lot easier with all the other work we've kind of laid out for us. Oh, looks like I forgot a comma here. Let's fix that real quick. Now we'll get both tokens. We're going to want to get the parameter values. Then we're going to use those values to generate our RTC token and then generate our RTM token and then return both of those tokens. So the parameters we want are the channel name, the token type, the user ID as a string, the role, the expired timestamp, and any error we get. We'll use the parse RTC params because that'll give us all the parameters we need. Next, let's check the error. So if RTC param error not equal to nil. Let the context know we've run into an error. And then we'll also abort with status JSON, give it a 400 code. And then for the body, we'll say status 400. And the message so error generating RTE token and we'll return the parse error. If everything goes well with getting our parameters, we're ready to generate our RTC token. So we'll say RTC token and RTC token error is equal to generate RTC token. We'll pass in our channel name, our UID string, the token type, the role, the expiration time. Next we'll generate our RTM token. We'll say RTM token and RTM token error. Here again we'll call the RTM token builder directly. Say build token, passing in our app ID, app certificate, user account which is our user ID as a string. The role is going to be RTM user. So we say RTM token builder dot role RTM and then expire time. Okay, 
Now, before we can return, let's double check and see if we got any errors generating the RTC token. So we'll say if RTC token error is not equal to nil, we'll let the context know that we've run into an error. So we'll say c.error. We'll pass in the RTC token error. Also want to generate an error message. So we'll say error message is equal to error generating RTC token. And let's show that error. Okay, so now we'll need to do a abort with status JSON, pass in the 400 error code, and then for the body we'll give it status of 400 and we'll give it the message we'll pass back our custom error message otherwise if the RTM token is thrown in error let's also do the same let the context know we've run into an error with our RTM token we'll generate our custom error message saying error generating RTM token, show that error, then let's also abort with status JSON, again for the body we'll give it a status of 400, and for the message we'll return back our error message. All right, so if we don't have any errors, we've generated our tokens, let's return both of them. So we'll say c.json, we'll give it a 200 return code, and then for the body, we'll return our RTC token, and our RTM token. Now, now we're ready to test our token server, so let's go back to the terminal window. We'll run our main Go file. We can see we're listening on port 8080, and we have all our endpoints there. So let's start with localhost 8080. We'll start with RTC, so RTC slash testing for the channel name. We're going to use publisher as our role. Say user account and one two three four five is our user ID. We can see we get an RTC token. We can see it both in the logs and in the response. Next, let's do an RTM token. We'll do slash RTM slash one two three four five six. And we can see we get the RTM token as a string. Let's test our dual token endpoint, RTE slash testing slash subscriber. Uh, this time we'll use UIDs, one, two, three, four, five, six. We can see we get both tokens. So everything seems to be working well. Let's give it one more test with user account. See, we get both tokens with a user account. And Let's purposely give it the wrong token type. And now we see, okay, our error is also generating. So we know our server is working correctly, and we can generate our RTC and RTM tokens for our GORE applications. Here we can see all the different responses, the success for the 200s, and then the 400 and the error that we threw. Mm -hmm.